What's up, guys? I'm pretty stoked for this one. I first inquired about this spinner in March of this year, and it is mid-July. <laughs> there were delays and uh, I think some, I guess, like communication errors. So yeah, I I ordered a tungsten moonlight from that was it Fefe Fefe EDC. I don't know how how you would say it in English or Chinese. I should say. All right, that's everything here. We got three boxes. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. I know. I know what's in here. Oh, it's got my name on them. That's so nice. So the reason we have it well three boxes. Here's the tungsten moonlight. This is a stainless steel origin. I messaged him since the channel's been growing like I've been doing, and I was like, hey, um, do you want to send me a fidget for review? Because I mean, I mean, yeah, that's that was as simple as it was, and he was like, yes, I need to do this. I was like, all right, cool. So I'm actually going to I'm gonna dig into the origin first because that was a freebie, and I'm gonna, I mean, yeah, that's what this video is for. This is to help him out. He helped me out with this spinner. Answered a lot of questions. Oh, he said thanks. Got a little sticker. So, wow, awesome finish. I like these little boxes. Got the foam, pick and pluck foam, so this can be, this can be repurposed. This is why I like it. All right, let's open this guy up. Got a tear tab here. I'm going to cut it right here. Ooh, it's shiny. So this must be that ceramic washed. Dang. So it's definitely comfortable. You know, it doesn't have very big wings or anything. It's very rounded, pretty thick. Take a look in here, what kind of bearing is this? So it's a hybrid ceramic, I think. It's really hard to see past these stainless steel ribbon cages. And sorry, I didn't say, I'm inside like the house. I'm not in the shop where I normally am. So we're in a different setting because the power went out right whenever this package was delivered. So the shop is going to be too dimly lit. So let's see. I'm going to clean the inside of these buttons a little bit. They look just like a little dirty, dusty. And I think there might be some in the bearing. So I did bring my bearing box inside in preparation for swapping some bearings in this, in this very video, actually. That may happen once I get the moonlight open and I've got two spinners in hand to talk about and, you know, potentially have one with a lot tight drying. I don't have my normal alcohol to clean bearings like I normally do. So first thing about these bearings, I want to, or buttons, I want to say while I have them off, the backside's been um, hollowed out. So these are very, very um, lightweight. Well, most of the mass of the spinner really is show this here. It's really in the spinner. Put the buttons just a little bit together. So 20 grams. 55. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's pretty significant when it comes to spinners and the difference in a standard material. So yeah, it's super comfortable. It is perfectly balanced. Like a lift test, like it's stainless steel, of course it's going to pass. Well, it does have a little rotation on this side. I can't argue that. But it doesn't translate on into vibration on the uh in the spinner. Let's see, I hold my hands steady on the table. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's balanced. I don't remember the cost on these. I should have looked that up before the video. Definitely check the description of this particular video. I'm just going to put a link to his Facebook group. Uh, I, yeah. 
All right, so that's the origin. Another reason we have two boxes here. So we've got the Tungsten Moonlight. And whenever I first was talking to him about this, I think I, I placed my order at the end of April. So there are definitely some delays with the, uh, oh no, it's over my box. Delays on the, I don't know. On, they weren't, they were, weren't his problem. He got the finishing done. Oh, duh, I need to cut here. Um, out of house. And that person overbooked themselves or something. Huh. Okay, let's see. Let's have yeah. another COA. So the Tungsten Moonlight. Oh yeah, I was talking about buttons. Um, I wasn't a fan of tungsten buttons at the time. Now I've kind of learned to appreciate them in a certain way. So I'm gonna open these zirconium buttons first. I asked for them in a um like a blackened, same kind of finish. I got stone washed. Oh, I didn't open this up enough. I got a stone wash finished and blackened zirconium, of course. I like this button design. Pretty cool. There's a relief on the back side. Leaf by the bearing post. A lot of material removed from this thing. It's very lightweight. I'm so excited about this spinner. I've won I've really wanted one of these since March. It's quite a while to wait. It's at 15. Alright. This thing's chunky. Especially that tungsten button. Alright. Rip her open. So I accepted this one. It was disclosed to not pass the lift test. I'm gonna just do it. I mean, if that's the if that's how it falls, it, that thing barely, barely doesn't pass. So it could be that particular arm. Yep, it doesn't do anything now. So it's just this arm right here. And I mean, yeah, I understand why he said, I think it's acceptable. It's more than acceptable, that's fine. I've got spinners in my own collection that don't pass as cleanly as that. That's actually the slowest rotating I've ever seen any spinner in the lift test. So we're at 155. I think this is, this might be the heaviest spinner I've ever tried actually, at least with the buttons. The total mass. Man, that's chunky. Let's get the scale out of here. So ergonomics on it are pretty awesome. I do like the buttons. That was a wonky spin. It allows me to put two fingers, I don't know if you can see, like that. That's often how I hold spinners. Like, yeah, it's fun to be cool and do a one finger balance. But really, I just do that for videos. Like if I'm really walking and enjoying something, I put two under it and it's really stable and I don't know, you just have a lot of control of it. So this button actually allows that really good. Get back to the origin real quick. I mean, like this is a giant button. Of course that allows it. It's really hard to compare these two, so I'm actually not going to, because I mean, they're such a different class of spinner. Let's actually take off this tungsten button. Looks like we've got the same kind of bearing. This felt a little loose. It is in fact loose. Screw it into this side. You see two mil? Man, I'm not in the shop again. Right, of course, I don't have they don't have a two mil Allen wrench here with me. That's okay. That's not like a, it's not any kind of deal breaker. Oh, there's something else in this box over here I missed. Got some two different size balls. I think, I mean, I know what they're for. They can, that's what these reliefs are for. They can go there in the spaces here. You can get all these rattly noises that kill the spin time. So 
cool that it comes with that and allows that if you like that kind of thing. But personally, not for me. I'm going to put those there. I totally missed those before. So now I've got three really awesome boxes to repurpose. <laughs> Get this trash over here. Since I'm in the house, I'm going to try to stay a little more organized. Keep the wife happy, right? So these are the tungsten buttons. I keep putting the scale away. I want to see what the tungsten buttons weigh compared to the zerk ones. And what the body weighs alone. 40.6. And 15 and a half. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's significant. The body alone. Yep, 115. That is exactly as I recall. So, that's like, for a tungsten spinner, just over 100 grams. And, like, south of, really, even 125. I'm finding, for me personally, is a really good sweet spot. This is right there at 100. The Amerilis. This is really the only thing I have to truly compare. So let's put some of the lightweight buttons on it. After I do a little bit of spin testing with this, this being a big heavy tungsten spinner, I'm going to put a full ceramic bearing in here. Definitely feels good with uh, zirconium. Match is good too. He was a little worried about that. You can see it's a little lighter in appearance. Still looks great. I was also worried in the pictures. Just, he's got so many different finish options. Like this is that ceramic polished wash or something. I gotta say in pictures, I, I did like how this looked more and it was even blackened on some of these. You know, he showed a bunch of them that were finished all together. This stonewash blackened still has a good shine to it, but it's definitely prettier in person. There's just something about this I can't quite place my finger on. Like, it's shiny, but there's still some signs of stonewashing, if that makes sense. So it's a... I don't want to say inconsistent. That sounds negative. It's not inconsistent. It's just, do you see it? It's shiny, but there's broken up reflections in places or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so this particular finish, the stone wash is awesome. It's a really nice, fine, soft feeling stone wash. The spinning the moonlight, if I put my, you know, I spin with my ring finger and I pull with it, if I have it here, it's hard to get a lot of power, but if I have it on the front of an arm, it just goes. Really, really rips. And it's perfectly balanced. I love this thing. This is honestly a really, really nice spinner. Do I have, I have this leather slip that I carry the Amerilis in sometimes. What kind of fitment have we got here? Man, that's tight. Jake Coy, I don't know if you watch my videos. I'm gonna be hitting you up about a slip for this thing. Cause I'm pretty sure I don't have one that'll fit it. It's just a weird enough size. Sorry if I'm getting off camera some here. I'm totally different setup with this table and here in the living room. Sorry if you hear the clock ticking too. It's really quiet here in the house. There's no, there's no other noises besides the clock and maybe some dogs breathing. Really, really like the moonlight, guys. And I'm about to wake it up with a different um, bearing. I guess this is one thing I want to try. I made these Ulton buttons for a customer. Um, Jorge, if you're watching, please forgive me, but I wanted to take these down here real quick to... I say take these down here from my shipping area and try them on this guy. Cause I mean, look at it. It's all see-through and stuff. 
And this is like as lightweight of a button as you can put on a tungsten spinner. You can really feel the gyroscopic effects with such a lightweight button. Because the button has no inertia itself. I mean, any inertia we can overcome without even telling. This is just my standard 25.4 mil button with the thin thickness, I must say. These are made to fit the two EDC triangle. They fit the moonlight nicely. All right, let's put a full ceramic in this thing. How far are we in? 15 minutes, okay. Yeah, that's long enough to get to the long form stuff. Probably already lost any of the casual viewers. Give myself some space. I don't think I need any other Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, I don't need any other spinners out of there. Everything else I have is a, I have this tri-spinner, I guess, but it's so small, it doesn't really compare. The dual vector foil that Osman just reviewed, that would be a good comparison for this one. Though this is a little more expensive, it is a little more of a premium finish, I would say. But they're actually pretty comparable as far as types of spinners. So full ceramic. And let's get out my tool. This one's got all kinds of recessing going on, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have to play with spacers. I anticipate. Let's see, camera centered over here. I'm like Feeling like I'm constrained for space here. <laughs> and I got <laughs> fingernail polish on the table over here beside me. <laughs> All right. Put these buttons out of the way now that I know how they are. I may make some for it. I might try them again one more time um, once I get a ceramic bearing in here. So it looks like we're gonna do this. That should fit this way. It does. And press it right on out. Held in there with good force, but not excessive force. Feels like we have a proper glue or Loctite or something. Check it out. I don't think it was a press fit. It didn't feel like it. Bore looks shiny, but that doesn't mean anything. I don't know if you can see, this has got a ribbon cage, and those might be stainless steel balls. So if, they're, if this is an all stainless bearing, that's why I don't particularly like it myself. Looks like I do see like a something. I'm gonna wipe it off real quick on my, on my shirt. Ah, yeah, something definitely wiped off on my shirt. That's interesting that it's not, whatever it was on there wasn't totally dry. Huh. Looks like there's a little bit on the base of the bearing tool too. See that? I don't think that was there before. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, so like always, let's mock everything up. Does this, does this fit down without any kind of spacer? No, it does not. A bearing spacer. Let's see how the bearing fits without any kind of Loctite glue cleaning. I think it's feeling rather tight, which again, I like whenever I am doing trial and error, trying to figure out what bearing I like in a spinner and what I don't much better than having to wait for some kind of glue to dry if you can use what's in there left over to your advantage and the, i'm peeking on the bottom here and you're just gonna have to take my word for it there is like a white crust that is definitely signs of some loctite let's see all right i wiped it with my hand so here now you can look see that pushed it out the bearing you know peeled it from the inside of the bore so there's a little bit left on the edge. So I'm gonna to try to clean that up. 
because I don't want that getting kicked back in the bearing whenever I go to give it a good little spin here. I think I got it all. At least any that I think will come out during a spin. So let's go with these Zerk buttons first, since they're gonna well, almost give as much feedback as the Ultim. Pretty awesome. Definitely sings. Compared to the Amerilus, which has the same bearing, also a very good one, I must say. And it's very well broken in. Do a button spin test real quick. That's pretty smooth. Almost sounds like an Acer Racer. Oh my gosh, I keep saying it that way. Well, I did that in the last video too. <laughs> Acer Racing bearing. The hybrid ceramic that they have. But just a, a, a louder version of that. I'm getting a very similar tone. All right, let's try the tongs and buttons. Oh my goodness, butter fingers. I didn't like damage it, right? That would be embarrassing. Sorry, I'm off camera. Actually, when I set up here, I'm actually gonna look for damage. Nah, tungsten hitting tungsten from that small of a distance, it's fine. Just didn't sound very pleasant. <laughs> Loud tink. But this thing resonates a lot. Oh man, it's so heavy with those buttons. So this particular ceramic bearing, I don't know if you noticed it was already open. I just, I don't, I got a bad feeling about it. I'm gonna try another one that's totally fresh. Zerk, tungsten, tool, press it out. Man, this is gonna be another one of those super long ones. I never have a plan when I go into a video. I'm doing, I'm basically just recording and semi-narrating what I would be doing anyways. I'm just putting a camera here and sharing it with you guys. Definitely see some Loctite. I'm gonna do the scraper off camera. You know, gonna scrape the inside of the bore. Try to keep any debris from getting in my workspace or near the bearings or anything. Seems to clean up pretty good. Wipe it out now. Hey, our power just came back on. Wonder what kind of noises we'll hear. Definitely gonna hear the aquarium running behind me. We got a couple turtles and Costumus and some other things. So I can't quite get that clean. I'm gonna use the old Swiss Army knife and cut out some of this stuff. Ah, this looks like a super glue, actually. No wonder I'm hating it. Oh, I just got fingernail polish out of here. Huh, I don't see any acetone. Oh well. I was just saying that in the shop the other day that I don't ever have acetone. Don't enjoy using it. It's a pretty nasty chemical. But I've been in the house. And she puts it on her fingers all the time. <laughs> but I'm not going to go hunting. Again, sorry for kind of being off camera here. Maybe I could, like, do this. <laughs> 
but there's just all this white crusty stuff falling, so I'm definitely gonna be, I guess I just gotta be conscious of what's getting dirty in the workspace. Being tungsten, there's no way I'm gonna scratch this thing with a steel blade, hopefully. Sometimes magic happens in the world. Y'all can see it, but I can see dust flying around. Clean that blade off. Clean this bore out again. Really wish I would have thought to bring alcohol in here from the shop. I would kind of had to keep in a spray bottle. That would have been nice. Okay. So this bearing is not not really that good feeling. <laughs> So let's try super freshy. I've only got two more left from my first batch, which I still claim to be my good batch. I've got all these that I've experienced a couple that were not pleasant. So cross your fingers with me that this is a good one from the old batch. Like, and they were the seller, I emailed them about that. I'm gonna rant here a little. Sent them a message, an email, and I was like, hey, um, the second batch of bearings just doesn't feel as good or the same as the first. And the response was, these are all the same bearings that we've had since 2016 when fitted spinners became popular. And I was like, huh, okay. But I can literally see a physical difference in the construction of the bearings. The older ones have more of a radius and chamfer on all of the corners. And these newer ones are very um, square and flat. Not sharp edges, but they're closer to right angles and not, they don't have a radius or a curve really. So like, I mean, come on, right? That tells me something's different. Can't be exactly the same thing from seven years ago and be entirely different. Oh, that was a fail. Uh, there we go. All right, it's going in with very little force. It did take a little bit of turning on my part and just like free fall in. Definitely a fan of that. I mean, looks like I over applied the Loctite here. So while that's still wet, I'm gonna go around with a knife pivot lube swab. I'm actually kind of messing around with uh, Amazon this morning and making a, like a recommendations list thing for you guys on all these little weird products that I use. I'll wipe this one off off camera. All right. Clean up a little. Let's see, let's go with the tungsten buttons. These things are cool. What's up, Luna? Got hot on the couch, got to reposition. <laughs> so that felt semi-secure, so I am gonna spin it. This one's much better. So yeah, this bearing was weird. I must have, I actually don't remember what I got it out for initially. Still not as nice as this one. This is a freakish bearing. I just, I wish everything could be like that. I'm actually hearing some rattle. What is that?
Maybe a loose button or something. I don't hear it now. Okay, tungsten button's pretty cool with this bearing. It'll actually probably break in on me too. I gotta remember this one's brand new. The mirrorless butt bearing, even though it's the same, is very broken. It's got hours and hours of time on it. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on this whole perfection chasing. It's exhausting. I'm trying to chase it. That sings, doesn't it? I flip it over and do both ways when it's spinning to hear if there's any tone difference. I don't like it when there is. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just try to make sure that it's a bearing that sounds the same. Man, the moonlight is really cool. Very ergonomic. These buttons are nice. I wouldn't mind some exotic buttons on it. You know, just kind of some kind of flashy upgrade. So I think this might be a spinner that is going to hang around. Probably going to live in the collection for a while. I've had my eyes on it for a long time, waited a long time, and I mean, I'm. It's a long time for expectations to grow. Can't help it. And this, uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I think it might even exceed expectations. Letting it hit my fingers. Okay, so that's the moonlight. I hate that I spent so long on that and not talking about the origin. Maybe I'll make another video on the origin because this is already getting quite long. 30 minutes, yeah. So how about I do, how about I do that? I'm just gonna stop this one shortly. Maybe talk about this a little bit since some of y'all are here still. Or do I change a bearing? <laughs> Actually, literally comment below. Uh, of course, you can't dictate my decision now, but on future videos, you can. Whether at this point in time, watching 30 minutes in, do you want to see another bearing swap on this spinner? Yay or nay? I'm trying to decide myself. But yeah, that'll help me on future videos. This one is feeling better since I've like taken the bearings off and spun it and cleaned it, it's smoother now. Um, now that we're so far into the video, I'm not afraid to say it did not feel good out of the package. Um, it was dirty. <laughs> like I know it was vacuum sealed and it was like all clean and whatever, but under, under those buttons, there was like dirt and debris, maybe from machining or from the, uh, the polishing, stone washing process like some kind of fine debris. I think some of that may have worked its way into the bearing during shipping or maybe even during that vacuum sealing, but it's worked its way out of there. Literally go back and listen to how it sounded in the beginning versus now. Just grab that scrubber at the bottom and bring it back and find a spot where this thing's spinning and listen. The tone is more pure now. So yeah, this is thing, this thing's awesome. Maybe I don't need to change the bearing now. Cause this is gonna get sent around to other reviewers like uh, Osman, Melanie, Sean, any, anyone that likes spinners, really. Ooh, maybe up to Mark Chang too. He does awesome videos. Uh, yeah, uh, it, I was gonna change the bearing to, I don't know. It, it, it needed it. It wasn't a good representation of what the spinner could be because the bearing was holding it back. But now, if this is how the maker, Fifi, Pepe, <laughs> wants to showcase this, I get it. This is a pretty sweet bearing in a stainless origin. Bearings are very subjective, I know. It's comfortable. It's fast. It doesn't really um, slap when it comes to the stop. Oh, I say that. You have to catch it just right. But yeah, it doesn't come to a slap like these guys, you know. I mean, literally double the weight. I'm not sure I like this tone. 
It's a little, it's a little much. Uh, maybe it just coming from that, it's a little much. <laughs> this thing sings. I'll let it break in, I think, before I go changing bearings on it again. Give it a couple hours of <laughs> runtime, carry it for a day or two. Can't enjoy it if I'm always changing bearings, right? That's what I tell myself. So yeah, I'm not gonna change the bearings on this in this video since it's feeling good now. Ooh, if I really catch it a little more on the inside here and pull, that's a fast spin. I was doing it more on the outside before. And for some reason, I don't get as much power. The power comes from there. Yeah. That's a big old comfy button too. Maybe I should make some big 28 millimeter buttons for this thing. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Tungsten or zirconium buttons. It's cool I got both. Initially, I really would have just taken it with zirconium buttons only. Totally forgone the tungsten buttons, but he... I don't remember exactly what he said, but that just wasn't an option. Still getting that rattle in there. What is that? That's a, it's the bearing, but what is it in the bearing? This one just got a little funk too. I just can't get that pure tone that I want yet. It sounds like something's in there. Everything's all like centered up. Yeah, I'm not like rubbing or anything. It's a chunker with these tungsten buttons. I struggle to feel secure. That rattle is driving me insane. I mean, it's just not, it's not acceptable. It's not what I want. <laughs> but I don't hear it on these. What is it? It's not a loose set screw. Really, you gotta say, I like it with the zirconium buttons in how it feels. It may just be a little on the loud side. Could quiet down again as it breaks in. But what is that noise with the tungsten buttons? Good and tight. I know you can hear that, right? Bearings are such a weird, weird, weird thing. I have opened my tolerance on what I find acceptable or not with them, but this one is not, this isn't it guys. We're doing it, where are we at? 40 minutes, that's not bad. We can do another bearing swap before I lose some of y'all, right? 
Let me know if you're still with me. Uh, I need this. I need this. And this. That lock sight's already good and set. I'm telling you. If you change bearings or anything with any kind of frequency, this this Harbor Freight number 42 thread locker medium strength is just the way to go. Easy cleanup, quick cure time. It holds really, really well. I mean, I'm cleaning it up with a plastic scraper. It doesn't take a dang knife. Look at that, I mean, the bore is clean. Fully clean now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. I would ever choose anything else. Uh, not in my element. Where's my stuff? All right. Got two more. Two more. Two more first batch bearings here. So this shouldn't. Now that the bore is all clean and everything. It shouldn't just press in and hold, but I'm still going to try. Sure does make things easier if it's a bad bearing and I just gotta take it right back out. Let's see, so tungsten ones that were making a weird noise. drastically different. Yeah, I know you can hear the sound difference. Is that not amazing how bearings from the same batch can be so drastically different? Let's put the Zerk on. That thing was screaming. It was so loud. Like abnormally loud for a full ceramic bearing, honestly. This is close to this guy. Like now, oh no. <laughs> okay, time for some Loctite. Now we're really, we're, we're in some good territory here. This spinner is growing to S tier. Let's do all this right. Keep this bearing as happy as possible. What is this little piece of fuzz? Drop you right out the bottom. And apply a little Loctite. Use KPL cotton swab. I think I'll have a link in the description for where to find these things. I've been asked enough times, it's about time I add something like that. Those that do reach out and ask me stuff, I'm quite grateful that you do. I think that's really cool. Okay. Not crooked. Love it. I got that bore cleaner that time. Okay, so this is kind of how as you're seeing this video going, first go around, having a bearing that needed to dry, because that went in looser. Now I can blab about the origin song, as we're 35 minutes into a video. 45 minutes into your video. <laughs> Lose track of time when you're doing your love, right? I'm not going to say whether you should buy an Origin or not yet. I need to spend time with it to develop an opinion. Since this was given to me, 
I haven't thought about the origin very much. I can recommend a Moonlight. I've been thinking about one of those for four months now. <laughs> and it meets or exceeds expectations. Moonlight's cool. Very neat design. I love how it's hollow in the middle. What am I doing? I have the origin in hand. It's comfy. I do wish it was stonewashed. That's just preferential, I guess. So maybe if you're worried about things being slippery, these big slick buttons are, well, they're slippery. That, this polished uh, ceramic wash finish or whatever is on the slippier, slippery side for sure. With a button that had a little more um, like traction we're gonna try this just because these have a deeper dish so I can grab it a little higher this is also a good way to show also standards like thickness buttons are not the move for the origin it does still spin so maybe some really thin 28 millimeter buttons could be cool you'd have a really thin streamlined spinner And definitely spin it faster now that I have more grip and button security. Can apply significantly more power into it. Definitely digging that. These buttons you hear that faint clicking sound? There might still be a little debris in this bearing, but I think it's cleanable. I'll do that later. With the Ultim buttons, it's going to amplify anything that's happening with the bearing. And there's just a little bit of clicking, rattling going on, so yeah, it tells me there's something inside. Not a big deal. It's comfy, there's no hot spots. It's very fast. You got pretty decent weight removal here in the middle. So you know, a lot of the mass is around this perimeter here. It starts to lose mass near the points, you know, of course. It's a triangle. <laughs> but the mass is in a good location. I mean, it's a, it's a hybrid between a triangle and a rounded spinner. Let's take off the buttons here, just to show the construction similarities and differences. So, I mean, we've got the same style cuts around the bearing, a lot of material removal, not the whole style or whatever. I don't know what, I don't know if they have any terms or names in the community. We've got relief cuts in the center here, you know, between the wings, between the points. Yeah, there's just a lot of mass right around the, or right near the button. And then all the button material is removed on the backside, which is definitely a unique trait. Not a lot of buttons are like that. Most of them are flat on the backside. I even make all mine flat on the backside. Even the Finim thing buttons are, they're flat on the backside just with a recess. It's really hard to beat this thing. That tone and sound is just like, it's god tier, it's past S tier. Origin's pretty cool. I think it's one of those really good budget options in the basic materials. It's comfy. Not the highest performance spinner, but it's fast and comfortable and very I mean, it's fidgety. Easy to start, stop, and try to hold it the weird person way. You can kind of do it. All right, enough on the origin, because I've run out of things to say on this unboxing and initial impressions. I do, however, want to know 
how this moonlight is now. A little bit of Loctite seepage on the bottom. That's okay. Trying to wipe it off here. Sweet. Mm, tungsten buttons first. What's up? Something's funky. Got a different sound than before. It's quiet on this side, but not really on this side, and I can feel something in the butt. Oh, there it goes. Hey, <laughs> it's literally like it just kicked something out. It's amazing how much quieter that is. Let's try this Zerk button. Cool to know that a standard 25 mil button fits, even though the stock buttons have lots of what I think is complicated machine work on the bearing post side. Moonlight's a pretty awesome spinner, guys. I never said the pricing. I know this one was $230. That is a pretty solid deal for a full tungsten tri spinner. Mm. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap up. That is definitely enough for unboxing, first impressions, bearing swaps, more bearing swaps, and more bearing swaps. <laughs> See ya, thanks.